so manas uh, welcome uh, to this debriefing session and uh, congratulations on scoring a 760 first of all let's just talk about this how does it feel uh thank you uh it i i feel relieved because uh gmat is was kind of a uh lingering feeling mm. uh it, i have taken a few extensions to because of job pressures uh personal problems but yeah uh i i'm happy that i'm fi uh, finally done with my gmat and the score is just uh, cherry on the cake yeah i mean this is q uh, q49 v44 it's, it's phenomenal improvement uh, and, and and again, consistent performance all across, 96% in Dylan SE, 91st in CR, and 91st in RC as well. And good improvement from, I mean, you had a 700, you went to a 760. So so really good improvement um, across the board. So we talked about our, your journey before, and we're going to just focus on a few points. Um, so let's kind of went, go for that 700 attempt. And, 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 you know, let's, why don't you tell me about your preparation during that 700 attempt? How did you go about it? And, uh, and, 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 and then, you know, yeah, uh, why did you then decide to, uh, to take on the EGMAT course? Okay, um, so uh, basically uh, my first attempt was the entire study was revolved uh, too much around uh, uh, critical reasoning. For sentence correction, again, I do remember we, uh, I had studied uh, uh, portions of it, one chapter and a couple of chapters from the Manhattan sentence correction book. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, so... I think a lot of the preparation was doing a lot of mock tests and I did not even, I did not analyze those tests uh, to the rigor that I did in my second attempt. So obviously when I compare my first attempt preparation to my second attempt, uh, there was a lot of things process wise, which were lacking. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is something that I realized uh, my, after my uh, GMAT, uh, I mean, after the first exam that I took, um, and so I think personally also, uh, you, you need to have that, uh, you know, organization, you know, of, of how you are maintaining your error logs and everything. Mm -hmm. So I felt that as a person, I, I lack here and I need to uh, take up a course so that I'll, I'll get a structure. You know, Got the it. structure is not something that I should worry about, uh, when I'm going for studying and all. And also I did realize that 700 is not a bad score and every 10 point improvement from here will take additional effort and you need something to, to kind of provide you that impetus. Uh, so that's when I started looking for like all the courses and all. And uh, I again came up with reviews from e e uh, GMAT club forum and all, uh, which in which EGMAT was very heavily, uh, uh, you know, recommended. So mm -hmm. I, I took it and uh, I, yeah, I mean, a lot of people do think and compare courses and, and so on and so forth. In middle of your preparation, you start mm -hmm. thinking if this is not working for you and all. Mm -hmm. But for me, what really worked with EGMAT was whenever I worked in certain areas where I felt that I am traditionally weak in, uh, EGMAT was always there with the, the, the proper structure. Like, for example, I think we talked about... Uh, some of the quant chapters, right? Like yes. the number properties. Number properties, you said geometry so, and... Geometry. So uh, e EGMAT, uh, I uh, very religiously followed EGMAT uh, structure for, for those chapters. And that is when I realized, okay, this this course will is good enough for me to, you know, kind of improve on these points. Because the last time I had uh, given the exam, I had got 48. So the target was obviously 50, which still remains unfulfilled. But, but yeah, I mean, at no point uh, in uh, two, one or two months into the preparation, uh, I'm pretty sure I might have done some mistakes, which uh, I would not have uh, otherwise. Mm -hmm. But at, at one point, at no point of, of the preparation, I felt that I was leaving things. You know, I, I was not being confident about it. You know, when you complete a subject, com like whatever you can and you solve a few questions, you get a sense of it, right? Uh, are you really confident of it? I, I was always at the end, I was really confident of those, uh, uh, of my... Uh, of and and I think well, you, you, you mentioned this one thing, you know, with 700 to 760, you, you, 760 is 99 percentile. You need that perfection. And for perfection, you need to have that, A, you need to have that confidence that you've not left any stone unturned. Exactly. The second thing is you you also need to have that process in place because you know you so that you fill those gaps. 
so 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 both those of those are important and you've had many instances where where you've looked put in that process sometimes <laughs> towards the end but but you put in that those reinforcements by looking at data so kind of let's start with this one thing that you alluded critical reasoning critical reasoning was an area of worry for you and uh, and 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 so how did you approach critical reasoning in the first attempt and then you know as, as you went through pre thinking how did it change how you approach critical reasoning okay uh, so critical reasoning uh, in my first attempt it was all about uh, reading the questions mm -hmm. and reacting to it i was still not very sensitive to quantifiers uh, which is something that egmat deals uh, with very uh, like they 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 give a lot of importance to quantifiers and and uh, and you see it Very in the important, uh, yes quantifiers uh, they they have this, the segmentation impact yes yeah so uh so yeah i mean these kind of nuances were definitely missing from the in the in the first uh, attempt and it was like because you read a lot of books and 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 i mean i i read a lot of books and also i kind of had this confidence that okay i can understand what is being written but that is only half of the work done right mm -hmm. so whenever i used to get things incorrect i would i would again go back and see what did i really understand wrong and mm -hmm. but then when you come to do the second round i mean with egmat and all you start uh, i i was very heavy on pre thinking in the initial phase of my uh, preparation and i think that did really help uh, towards the end i definitely did curtail the pre thinking part was uh, to a point where i was not really going about looking at scenarios and this was also i think one of the co uh, forum queries uh, i did raise a question mm -hmm. and even there it was suggested that okay you know if you are not able to get a particular scenario don't worry about it as long as you are able to find the connection and so, the i mean the, the beauty of this was you basically went through the entire process you said okay and, and because you went through it you absorbed a greater portion of the information from the argument yeah. you processed it you 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 and, and then we were counting what did you do before right you you said you understood the conclusion the premises you did the logical gap analysis and then if scenarios came you said you just yeah, do it. I if mean, they didn't you didn't we wouldn't bother yeah so so which is a lot more analysis of the original information before you look at the answer choices correct correct, correct. and and, and because and you once i started doing that i did really uh, i mean for me the test there was that am i able to eliminate closed choices uh, even without thinking of particular scenarios scenarios yeah yeah so once i was able to do that i i felt com comfortable you know dropping the Dropping and, the and that's okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah and that's sure. okay because you also got the quantifier piece because when you think about closed choices there are some most those that they're very yeah. very heavily used over there and as long as you can visualize those quantifiers you're fine yeah, yeah. so so and and that 91st percentile i mean from that 74 this just shows that you were able to, to to do all of that otherwise i mean that's i mean i think there are two more percent two more ability levels beyond beyond 91st that that exist on the gmat so you were out of the the, the 40 odd ability levels possible in cr you were at pretty much you know the pinnacle that way <laughs> yeah so 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 that's that that's that's that, that's good so so i think let's kind of talk about i want to then talk about the other pieces as well so let's talk about sc and 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 how did you approach sc in i mean because you went from what 84th to 96th 85th to 96th percentile in sc so, so how did you approach SC during that that first attempt? And you're a voracious reader; you read a lot uh, overall. So, what was your approach to it in the first attempt, and then how did it modify in the second attempt? Uh, so, in the first attempt, I had for SC there was only one preparation, and that was the sentence correction guide, and also there was this uh, sorry, uh, the Manhattan sentence mm -hmm. correction guide. Uh, after that, it was. Honestly, just looking at the couple of questions that you used and to... Your, and your ear, because what sounded right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, yeah, I mean, even I think with the 85 percentile, I think there was one particular, there's a breakup, right? Where you are, uh, where they say logical meaning and then uh, grammar, right? Yes. So I remember I had uh, in my first ESR, in the logical meaning side, I think there I, I was... Uh, somewhere around uh, 85 or 90 percent in the 
grammar uh, portion i was fift- at 50% 50% so you know okay. that was again one of the other cues which which was for me to take a course you know so that i don't i i because obviously you know that you it's very difficult to remember the grammar rules mm-hmm. uh, you cannot do that so you need the kind of structure that egmat provides right that you you do one you you do a couple of kinds of questions mm-hmm. if you're getting it wrong you you see it and you under, try to understand it and even if you think you have understood it it doesn't let you go it again asks the same question similar question in the next uh, uh uh quiz and you you kind of get used to those questions so so yeah that that structure was really important which was one of the reasons why i uh, thought of taking egmat but yeah uh, so the the so yeah the, the the meaning side of it was was covered it was only when during the second uh, preparation uh, uh, i mean preparation for the second exam when i uh, there was a time when i went uh, too heavy on the grammars and all and which really uh, you know messed with the mind <laughs> so there was a serious dip in my uh, sentence correction abilities mm-hmm. but then uh, uh, as we as i said right i, I took up only those uh, modifiers and parallelism so yes, and i think I, let's answer, i think let's so you you did this you did the grammar really well then you went into over analysis because you're always a logical yeah. thinker and, and 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 i can see the scores dip in in our in scolarium exactly. as well it's like it's going like this and then it last 20 accuracy dips and and and, and, and that's when you kind of and your mock scores dipped along with that as well yeah. because yeah. you were taking too long in this this analysis so yeah. so uh, what are the two or three things that you did to fix that because you went back to that 96 percentile which i think is just one level shy of the best you can get in sc yeah so i think uh, a couple of things i mean i went and revised the uh, for modifiers parallelism i kept going to the egmat course and i uh, also again i i really like the sentence correction uh, manhattan book mm-hmm. so i kept going to those chapters and i think there is this uh, chapter in uh, mod, uh, manhattan book uh, modifiers and then seven you know like second part uh, okay. which is the more uh, which is the more uh, which covers more complex concepts on modifiers right. so i went and uh, revised that and i went and first revised the manhattan book and then i again came for egmat for the structure or the approach the approach uh, yeah so uh, so yeah these two things i did and after that uh, the unanswered questions that you have uh, so i went back and i never put a uh, i never put a uh, filter saying that I want questions only from modifiers chapter uh, but because you know that's the thing about sentence question you want to be worrying about many things yes. you know uh, so so yeah and, and, and once those questions uh, came up even if you know when you get something incorrect you do make an analysis hmm. uh, what I did in the second round of this question solving was uh, I tried to eliminate the other four, even if I have remembered the mm-hmm. correct answer. So I think that with, gave for me solid what... reasons. I'm hoping. Sorry. Ah, was... with, with, yeah, with the right reasons. Yeah. With the right reasons. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, I think I think this part really helped, and obviously there was a bit of cushion always that I felt my first uh, exam preparation was very surface level. So if I can get eighty five percent sentence correct uh, mm-hmm. sentence correction with that preparation, mm-hmm. I am not that bad, <laughs> you know. With I am suddenly I was doing if you see the mocks and all, I was doing really bad. I mean, yeah, I know, uh, I know, you were yeah. doing bad. So, <laughs> so so yeah, I mean, it. I think that's the point where I just I think. Uh, so, so tell me, we also talked about this error log piece. So you also built an error log in SC. That was the only area where you built an explicit yeah. error log. So how did that help? uh so i think for me writing the sentence correction log was more of uh building a record and uh i have i do not have a lot of questions on on my error log but even there the the way i think is being recorded there yes you know and i i i also did a lot of this uh what uh thing did you really take from this question right Mm -hmm. so i did Spend like I remember just to put something on the record for one line, 
I did spend uh, like 15, 20 minutes and I was not even typing the question and all. This is this is just about what you thought about the correct answer, what you thought about the incorrect answer. And then there is this whole analysis of... So you're you talking know, about what... the behavioral log template that correct. EGMAT provides yeah, and yeah. then you said, okay, that makes you correct. think. Yeah, yeah. You can't just simply fill it out. Yeah, yeah. And it is very, very important to, to you know, think it out, you know, mm -hmm. uh, because... I had joined a couple of study groups and I had seen a couple of error logs where uh, the things to take is basically the official explanation of whatever, uh, mm. wherever the source of mm. the question was. And that is wrong. That is... Uh, yeah, I because mean, it tells you this is what you missed, but the question is, why did you miss that? Why did you miss it? Yeah. It doesn't yeah. answer that question. Yeah. I, I mean, there was this one problem that I faced with sentence correction. Uh, just for example, I mean... Uh, if it if it, if something sounds incorrect, you know, uh, I mean, if you if you are finding a better meaning of the sentence in the options, and if the initial original sentence does convey a slightly weird meaning, but still possible meaning, logical. In those questions, yeah, in those questions, I used to really you know start. Uh, changing the meaning as per the better looking. You option. would go for the elegance. E exactly. Uh, and also something which had a uh, better meaning, like, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the lion and the monkey were dancing, you know, something mm -hmm. like that. It doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. If something, uh, if something in the option analysis says, puts me in the view, viewer seat, mm -hmm. I would go for that option because it made more sense. Mm -hmm. But at that point, I think the, really the sentence correction is all about whether your sentence construction fits the original meaning as long as the meaning is something plausible. Plausible, yes. Yeah. Do so you know, I think that can was... you, can you, so you have the official guide, right? Yeah. Do you know how many times the word intended meaning is there in the description of GMAT sentence correction? Uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, I didn't follow it. The word intended meaning. Do you know, uh -huh. can you guess how many times have they written in the in the 10 pages where they describe what is tested in GMAT sentence correction? I have no idea. Could you guess? 10 times? 22 times. Oh, okay. I mean, that's, I mean, people think there's nothing called intended meaning. It's written 22 times there. Yeah. And, and, uh, and that's uh, where, I mean, because GMAT SE is a test of communication and there's a, the author has something in mind when, when, when they want to communicate something. And, right. and, and so you've got to maintain that piece yeah. if it's a logical piece, sometimes it's not logical and there you have to infer. And that's kind yeah. of where you, where, where you, you know, the other answer choices do help sometimes, or otherwise you have to spend a bit more time on the original option, but yeah, where the, where the meaning is logical, you've got to maintain it. You yeah. can't go for so, elegance. Yeah. Th this was, this was one of the main things. I, and this is something again, which I felt EG might really test it, hmm. you know, because, uh, I don't know if I remember that there was this one particular question which talked about an author and then about its book and the intended meaning says that the book had this effect, mm -hmm. but there are options which says so that the author. the author had it effect, you know, and, and, and both logical, by the way, both are logical, right? So in that sense, I used to go for the ones where, which made me feel that no, no, it, it makes sense for the author to change history or and by the way, the history. author piece is also written more elegantly. Yeah. It's easier to yeah. read. Exactly. So I used to fall for these quite a lot, you know, uh, and that's when the modifier and parallelism issues used to really get highlighted even more because I was not able to say, ki, okay, you know, uh, like, you know, distantly placed nouns and all those things. Sometimes I used to uh, not track of it, you know. I yeah, used but, to but, I mean, so, but those were not modifier issues to begin with. Those were essentially the issues where you didn't really under keep the original exactly. meaning yeah, yeah. in mind yeah. while evaluating the answer choices. Correct. Correct. So, 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 so and so, that's where they're incorrectly tagged as modifier issues where it's, it's just, I'm not yeah. bringing the meaning forward. Yeah. 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 So, so you also yeah. had timing issues in SC, right? And, and how did you fix those? So I, I took the help of, uh, custom quiz it is it is right where you can take up the 36 questions yeah yeah that's just custom quiz that engine, yes. set. and uh, i think there is a help guide on to how to create those set of 36 questions 
medium and hard and mm-hmm. which uh, which section takes how many mm-hmm. questions so I, i i did that uh, very religiously for the uh, last 10 15 days Mm-hmm. uh and uh, like this is this is a i realized this is a problem uh when i did an each uh, i did an official gmat mock and even there i was able to uh get to the 25th question and when i was at the 25th question i used to have like 6 7 minutes to spare mm-hmm. so uh, that's when i took this up you know this uh, i have to finish uh, the exam on time and this was a this was an issue even uh even with uh, my first attempt uh, uh i felt that there was conceptual issues but i think even after conceptual an issue issues, you need uh, a bit of that stamina building so towards the end i think i did only these yeah. ability quizzes yeah yeah i am looking at that on your account and right now you have about three almost full length mocks simulated using custom quizzes yeah that yeah. you have done and then you have those mini mocks that i see but two or three more of those where you have not all three but just two subsections there yeah um, yeah. so yeah that was because i was uh, out of sc questions towards the end uh, unanswered no, uh, unanswered ones yeah yes. unanswered ones that's yeah. good you adapted that that was good so let's kind of talk about quant what are the bigger areas that you were worried in quant and then how did you go about the course and how did the course structure help you okay so uh, like i have been traditionally good at mathematics i am an engineer and mm-hmm. like i have been good at mathematics but geometry has always been one of those areas where i have never been 100% confident in mm-hmm. you know uh, especially when it comes to the higher level questions mm-hmm. so the first thing i did was uh, and i also realized that the tougher geometry questions are really about data sufficiency and this is when you need to understand properties and understand why you arrived at it and understand which properties are important as well because sometimes there are a lot of derived properties with thousands of cases that uh, are like suitable for one particular question but are not really universally helpful and you tend to when you are just revising you tend to you if you're not really paying attention to which formulas are really helpful you might just cram your head so i think egmat what i did was uh, the first thing that i did with egmat was probably uh, geometry i gave as much time as i could to to uh, to that and uh, i was doing this practice uh, i mean i was following the uh, flow uh, mm-hmm. as prescribed but uh, in the yeah i mean there again uh, the practice questions the way uh, it is structured you cannot leave a concept uh, half learned you know if if you i mean it will definitely show on the on the uh, gmat skills practice quiz the, yes yeah so so yeah this is something i did and even when i was revising i came back to those tests where i uh, had not scored uh, the proper percentage i mean uh, not all the all of them correct and i used to replay them you know i i didn't analyze my previously wrong uh, uh, questions i replayed those questions so uh, and once i used to get uh, 100% then i used to skip ahead if not then i used to again you know kind of uh, see try to think whether it is just a question that i got wrong because i missed something or is it something that i just could took the wrong idea altogether you know so uh, we we should basically determine whether i would go and study it again or i would just do that question uh, probably Good decisions i i can really see that i mean i'm looking at your geometry piece over here and um, and i can really i'm just looking at this 3d i mean concept 100% which is where you know all of these concepts are skipped the the course set skip skip these concepts but when it comes to applications um you know that's where you scored a 41% on this in the gmat skill yeah. diagnostic yeah. quiz and and that's where you had to go through this but i mean in the end i i look at this i mean these are this is beautiful and i can see this time spent over here this is where you probably came and revised this because the recommended yeah. time is 40 minutes and you spent 66 minutes over here so you this is probably a second uh, attempt on this learning activity this probably is what i'm guessing uh no 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 you spent 30 minutes and then you spent 37 minutes reviewing it okay so that's that's really diligent effort i mean that's that's just a showcase of the quality of of, of effort that you put in thanks so 
Okay, so we're done with the GMAT, you know, 760, 96 percentile, really, really good score in, in, in verbal, really good score in quant. If you were to really just say, hey, you know, if you were to do this in two months, what would you, or, or what, if, some, if you were to recommend, how do you go from a 680 to a 760? What are the three things that you would recommend someone do? 680 to 760, behaviors, three behaviors. Uh, one thing I would say for verbal is try to read more. Uh, uh, like things you like, things you don't like, uh, based on your mood. But try to read articles, books, whatever you can. Uh, maybe, but do it uh, religiously. Try to ask questions. Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe take up some dense books. Uh, you know, which put out a lot of information. As we were discussing, yeah, something you said like Arun Shori's book, Yet Sapiens, and other pieces. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, that's one. so yeah, that's one. Second, uh. Take quant uh, seriously. Uh, a lot of people with the engineering background think that you know it's 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 easy uh, to get a fifty one, but I mean it it would be still easy for a lot of people. But then it does require a lot of attention, especially you you would probably solve word problems very uh, fluently. But when it comes to number properties and all, there will be issues. You know, so there use are data essentially. Take yeah. one seriously. Use data. Fig figure out what yeah. your problems are and fix those. Correct. Yeah. And uh, third thing, I think, uh, maintaining error log. But I haven't really talked about EGMAT here. Uh, but for me, behaviors. You know, it's behaviors. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I think uh, analyzing what uh, what is going wrong is very very important. Hmm. Uh, and do not lose, I mean, the analysis should be done from a third party, uh, you know, like from a third person perspective, you know, uh, uh, you need to be uh, honest in saying that, okay, these questions, these uh, issues, like it is very difficult for, for me to accept that I'm not understanding the passage well enough, you know, because you, you have been doing this all throughout your life. It, it feels that you have it under control, but then GMAT questions really push you to the edge. So when you are targeting 760, uh, you need to be uh, at a level where you are you are really understanding. I mean, you are really able to see the more important pass, uh, parts of the passage, you know, and you are able to draw the connections and all. So it requires a lot of practice. I would say that, I mean, it does not, it requires a lot of practice in thinking, you know, not ab about the number of questions and all. Uh, uh, record your if you are maintaining an error log record your thoughts in your error log i mean that is that is very very important you need to uh i kind of did a lot of this mentally but then because i had the support of egmat where i could come and uh receive these questions it it helped but uh people who are working on it individually they need to maintain the thought process in the error log that is very very important and uh, it is always uh, never, it is always uh, good to go and revise your concepts, even if it is in your three days before yeah. the final yeah, exam. Good. Don't you do know. a lot of new things, go revise things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, go and revise things. I mean, sometimes what we feel is that uh, if I am having to revise concepts now, what does it tell me about the stage of preparation? It doesn't tell anything. It just says that you're ready to you know, yeah, I, 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 I just still say, I mean, uh, when I, uh, so you're talking about, you're talking about cricket before this and, and, and even right now, I mean, I, I played cricket at a, at a club level, uh, okay. when, when, I mean, not anymore, but 15 years ago, um, I played, was a part of the German state team. I, I had people who played for Hyderabad who, uh, who actually played for my, for, for me. And uh, uh, yeah, so the, this this guy who who actually is now part of German national team and uh, and he yes. kept for Azur, so he he, he oh. played with me. So um, and, uh, and 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 so um, even when I go back and play, and in fact, uh, if I could turn the camera as a cricket bat right behind this, so I used to still practice the strokes. I mean, the same strokes that I practiced twenty five years ago, and and it's like, is my foot coming through right? Is there a gap between? Um, uh, the, the the leg and my 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 bat. I would assume that I'm wearing a pad or so. So so those things are really really important. You've got to do that and and before especially before the test. 
And before a match, that's what you do, right? You're just doing shadow practice and that's kind of revising right. your concepts and right. making sure your, your body weight's transferring properly. Right. You're not yeah. trying 10 new shots. You exactly. don't want to do that before a match. The same thing applies to the GMAT. Yeah. Yeah. And if I can add one more thing, there was this tendency of mine to, you know, really guess the uh, way I have been performing by looking at this current Absolutely. question. You know? Yeah. So even in the, uh, like I did that a lot uh, in my first attempt. In my second attempt, uh, after I did this ability quizzes and, and all these things, I had kind of told myself that you don't have to think like that and focus uh, on the question at hand focus on the question so i really uh was a goldfish in, in this attempt i was a goldfish i completely forgot about the previous question uh when i was doing the new one and also there was a point where it did feel uh, very overwhelming especially uh going into the gmat i was very very confident about my sentence uh critical reasoning and reading comprehension but there was one particular comprehension that i was really at sea and it did feel overwhelming but yeah i i i, I took a 10 seconds of a deep breath <laughs> yeah yeah and then uh I, I resumed the test again so yeah i mean just uh yeah that, that was I mean, that's, the, those are really good things it just impacts your performance and, and it's sometimes take do making doing that research really important so, okay. so so absolutely yes i agree with that Okay, I think that this is a phenomenal set of inputs. I and mean, we asked for three, probably get five or six, and each one of them was very, very valid. And that was very valid. I mean, if you want to get to that high score, you've got to do these things. And uh, and so so thank you, uh, Minas, for, for that. And, um, and I'm sure a lot of people would benefit from this. So let me actually stop recording. And...